What did you have for lunch yesterday? Just for a moment, turn to the person next to you and tell them. Okay, time's up. This wasn't a memory test. This was actually a food choice question. How did you decide on that meal? Was it price, taste, texture, flavor, fitness, culture, convenience, or calories? Or was it based on what's in, like gluten-free, vegetarian, raw, or vegan? Or was it based on some restrictions that you have, like allergies? Doubtless, we all have different ways of choosing what we eat. But have you ever thought of choosing your meal based on its carbon footprint? I asked myself this question about a year ago in my environmental studies class. I wanted to see whether something as small as what I chose for lunch could have an impact on the entire school's CO2 emissions. And so I decided to analyze my school's eating habits. What difference does it make whether I choose this meal or that one? But let's start at the beginning. What exactly is a carbon footprint? Well, the technical definition is the amount of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere by our actions. And because I'm discussing lunch, these actions have to do with food production. So from growing to packaging, from transporting to consuming and then wasting our food, how do all of these produce carbon dioxide? Food production is responsible for about 25% of the entire world's CO2 emissions. So what do you think? Can we really do something to save the planet just by changing what we eat? In fact, just by changing what we eat for lunch? I went to meet the cafeteria manager, Zuzana Gordova, and she gave me valuable information about our school's eating habits. And that's where the fun started. On average, our school produces about 3,700 meals per month, the equivalent of which are about 500 kilograms of food. And we have a wide variety of choices. We have beef, pork, chicken, fish, vegetarian, and soy options. And as you can see, chicken is really popular at our school. Next, I wanted to find out how I can convert food kilograms to kilograms of CO2. How can I figure out how much CO2 has to be released into the atmosphere for the production of each of these main ingredients? And I decided to use a reliable converter called Green Eats. So, for example, one kilogram of chicken, the production of which produces about uh, six 0.9, almost 7 kilograms of CO2, whereas to produce one kilogram of veggies, only about 2 kilograms of CO2 are released into the environment. So what should we do? Well, I went to meet, um, I decided to convert the entire school's lunches, all the meals combined. What number do we come to? Just from the lunches we eat, we produce about 4.5 tons of CO2 in one month. But what does this actually mean? Well, let's take your average car. How much does this average car going at an average speed have to go to produce as much CO2 as our school does in one month? 16,000 kilometers. Let's put this in perspective. What about one school year? How far would that car have to go in one school year to emit as much CO2 as our school does in that one year? You'd have to travel around the world four times in that car to emit as much as we do. So what can we do? Well, what if we go vegetarian? What if we ban all meat from our cafeteria? My results showed that by eliminating all meat meals, we can go from having a carbon footprint of 4.5 to just one ton of CO2. So if you're a vegetarian, you should be feeling pretty smug right now. 
What's the deal with animals then? Why are they such a big producer of CO2 and other greenhouse gases? Well, there are many steps to the equation. There's deforestation, which is a natural loss of carbon sinks. It's used for production of land so that animals can graze, and also crop production as well. And we can look at transportation, we can look at packaging, all these energy-intensive sources. But my favorite reason for why animal production is such an issue are frequency-actuated rectal tremors. <laughs> Farts for short. <laughs> Ruminant animals like cows and sheep produce methane, another greenhouse gas even more powerful than CO2. And they produce this from their burps, their farts and their poop. And the more we stuff them with unnatural feed, the more they burp, fart and poop, continuing this vicious cycle of increased emissions, ultimately contributing to climate change. Professor Tim Benton from the University of Leeds went so far as to say the biggest intervention people could make towards reducing their carbon footprints would not be to abandon cars, but to eat significantly less red meat. But what if you're like me, and you just love meat? What can we do to reduce our carbon footprint, but not give up the luxury of enjoying meat from time to time? Well, in my project, I decided to reduce or eliminate the biggest offender, beef. Even though beef wasn't really popular at our school, it only made up about 17% of the choices that we had. Beef was responsible for 33% of the entire school's emissions from our lunches. So if I take out beef from our cafeteria, we will reduce our carbon footprint from 4.5 to just 3 tons of CO2 in that month. So, those are my results. I handed in my paper, my teacher was happy, I was happy, and that's where it ended. Until the cafeteria manager contacted me and asked me for my data. And that's when it dawned on me. How stupid was I to claim that I wanted to find the practical value in these results when I didn't even make my findings accessible to the general public? And that's why I'm here. Because what I just said today doesn't apply to the people that go to our cafeteria, the parents, teachers, students, and staff, because what I just told you today applies to all of us. And the person who needs to hear this is the cafeteria manager herself, which is why we would like to invite her to the stage today. So this is Zuska, and she's the cafeteria manager at our school. Now, Ted's motto is ideas worth spreading. I've shared my ideas, but I want you to share yours. So during the intermission, you will have the ability to uh, choose which option you think is best for our school. And, um... <laughs> and the question is, what should our school to do? So the option is nothing. So let's do nothing. So life is go on, as come last talk never happen. <laughs> or option B, we take the radical choice. Zuska creates delicious vegetarian meals and meat is forever banned from our cafeteria. Or option C, so we decrease the most environmentally um, costly meat and in other words, I ban the beef. <laughs> or D, we have meatless Mondays. Or E, we have the same options as before, but I create the signs which will inform you about the effect of your lunch on the environment. Or option F, give us your perhaps better idea. Now, I know you can't change what you had for lunch yesterday, but what will you have for lunch tomorrow? Thank you. <laughs>